Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you today. Hope you've had an awesome day. And thank you for subscribing to the channel. Voya have launched an 800 volt charger, meaning you can charge a Voya EV in 10 minutes. 400 kilometers of range in 10 minutes. And you know what? This car is one of the best looking SUVs I've seen anywhere in the world. It's just gone on sale in China, along with a number of, of other EVs. My new video that's gonna be coming out probably tomorrow will show you all the new cars that have just come out, just gone on sale in China in August, and how well those cars have done in August. The Chinese car market is changing very quickly. In the past, Manufacturers, well, actually, we shouldn't say manufacturers, I should say brands, such as Western brands like Toyota, Volkswagen, and a few others, Nissan, have done very, very well in China. Remember, though, those cars are actually manufactured by Chinese companies. They're sort of JVs between American and Japanese and European brands. The only car brand in China that is a Western company that's actually able to manufacture that car themselves there in China is Tesla. However, the market in China is changing dramatically because in the past, people in China would generally only buy Western brands for vehicles. But that is dramatically changing this year. Volkswagen historically has been the highest seller of vehicles, full stop in China, by a pretty big margin. But They've lost a huge amount of market share this year. So has a number of other Western brands. In fact, there's been no Western brand that's actually increased market share this year in China. However, there's been numerous Chinese brands that have massively increased their market share in China, including, of course, BYD. Now, Voya Motors is a high-end EV brand under Dongfeng. Not sure who Dongfeng is? Dongfeng Motor Corporation is a Chinese state-owned automobile manufacturer headquartered in Wuhan, China. Traditionally, it is one of the big four Chinese automakers, and Dongfeng is currently in the top four in terms of output, along with Chang'an, Automobile, FAW Group, and SAIC Motor. Now, when you start to research all these car brands, it's very interesting to see what they say. Some of the car brands in China that are just purely Chinese car brands that are big companies that have existed for a long time don't talk in the same way that these Western car companies do. They talk in a way of saying something like, well, we plan on becoming all EV by 2025. I mean, how many companies in the West do you hear saying that? How many big companies do you hear saying, we're going to pivot completely by 2025? There's none that have said that, none. There are some small car brands owned by big brands that the big brand has said, that car brand will become pure EV by 2025, but that car brand will only represent a very small amount of sales for the big parent company. Whereas in China, some of, the, some of even the big parent companies are saying, we're going to change to all EV by 2025. And the reason they can see the writing on the wall, you can see the number of EVs being sold in China. You can see how popular they are. You can see that people don't want a car that doesn't have some form of electrification. So Dongfeng own Voya Motors, and Voya Motors is their EV-only brand. It's a pretty common strategy in China. Now, they announced some really interesting news at the 2021 Dongfeng Autumn Conference and the Sixth Science and Technology Innovation Week, which just happened. The most interesting was Voya's self-developed 800-volt high-voltage platform and super-fast charging technology. So what exactly is the charging rate? I mean, obviously there's quite a few cars now that run on 800 volt high voltage platforms, but don't charge very fast. So it's a bit of a misnomer. It's a bit of a myth to say that because a car has an 800 volt high voltage platform, it therefore has fast charging because it's not necessarily, the two are not necessarily mutually conditional. So in this case though, it is correct. This car has 360 kilowatt fast charging. That's fast. That's faster than an Audi's charging that's faster than Hyundai charging. That is exceptionally fast. It's up there in the top 1% worldwide. Now, Voya claims this car will give you a range of 400 kilometers in only 10 minutes. 
And I reported that earlier this month, GAC with the Aeon also unveiled similar technology. By the way, the Aeon has a range of nearly a thousand kilometers. It's insane. I'll put a link in the description to that car. You should check it out. So you can see this is a trend in China, right? This trend is happening in China. Can you imagine just in the space of a few years that within China, people will just be expecting you to be able to charge your car in 10 minutes. Well, mostly charge it to almost full in 10 minutes. That's going to be a standard in China. Imagine going from China to, say, the United States or some other backwards country, Australia, and going, what's going on? Why are these charges so slow? You know, what's, why are you so backwards here? Why are you driving these old dinosaur cars with fossil fuels? I, I was sitting behind a bus today, and the cloud of black smoke that came out of that bus's exhaust was so dark, I could barely see for a matter of a few seconds. And that is all, you know, that's all pollution. I mean, there's so many countries in the world now adopting electric buses, adopting fast charging. This is the future. And China is adopting this quicker than many, many other, most other countries around the world. Now, Voya Motors also unveiled a series of cutting edge research and development results that they've been working on. These include a bunch of different things, a lot of jargon, a lot of blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to not bother with that because um, the main thing here really is this fast charging technology, the ability that this car brand has to use this, utilize this 800 volt fast charging technology, and the fact that they're actually building out charges so that you can use them. Now, what is the standard in case you're not aware? At present, high voltage systems for electric cars usually use a 400 voltage. Tesla vehicles use 400 volts. However, the market is kind of demanding that energy efficiency increases. And one of the ways you can increase energy efficiency in your car is by moving to an 800 volt architecture. And then that does enable the ability to put super fast charging in that car, depending upon the battery system as well. Now, is their charging system compatible with other technology? It is. It can also be charged with 160 kilowatt DC fast charging and 380 volt 11 kilowatt AC charging as well. Now, just for context, the Porsche Taycan has the 800 volt platform and it was the first mainstream manufacturer to have that. Then Hyundai followed suit, also with an 800 volt platform in its eGMP cars. In addition, Mercedes-Benz did the same thing with their EVA platform and General Motors third generation pure electric platform will apparently also be 800 volt, but I have no idea when that's actually gonna hit the market. Now, Dong Feng are throwing out some numbers out there. I don't know if these mean anything to you or me, but I'll share them with you anyway. They're saying that the Voyeur Free, which is their only electric car under the Voyeur brand right now, just went on sale last month in China. Apparently, its driving efficiency is 91% under CLTC conditions. So if you know what that means, let me know in the comments below. So what about the Voyeur Free? Don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I've got to say it might be the best looking SUV I've ever seen. Now, Car News China says it is positioned as a large, medium-sized SUV that will be released soon, but actually not true. It was released last month and they sold 410 of these last month in China in August alone, but it was released during the middle of the month, so they actually sold 200 of these per week, and you can see why. Now, there's three different models. One model is a plug-in FEV, plug-in hybrid, and the other two models are both purely battery powered. It comes with a pretty big battery pack too, it's quite impressive. Now, the FEV model has a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, and it gets a front and rear dual motor with a maximum power output of total system power of 694 horsepower, peak torque of 1,040 newton meters. So it'll do zero to 60 miles an hour, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.8 seconds. Pretty impressive for this size of car. And also it gets a range of about 850 kilometers. It has a pure electric range, I think of about 150 kilometers, because it has a 33 kilowatt hour battery. Don't know what the battery chemistry is. I tried to find it out, couldn't find it out. If any of you know, let me know right in this comment section below and tell me where you found that information as well. Now, apparently this car actually never runs as a petrol vehicle. It actually uses the petrol engine to simply power the electric system. That's what they say. 
I don't know how this can be true because if it has a combined system output of 694 horsepower, peak torque of 1,040 newton it appears as though it is combining the two together. But anyway, now, the pure electric version of this car is really where it's at for me. The base model is two-wheel drive with a single motor in the rear. The base model has a power output of 347 horsepower, peak torque is 520 newton meters, and it has a range of 505 kilometers, which appears to be an entirely believable range considering this car has a pretty big battery. It's 88 kilowatt hour battery. Now the other model, the higher position model, also comes with the same 88 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it has, well actually it has the same 694 horsepower and 1,040 newton meters, as the FEV model. So maybe the, they're telling the truth in terms of the FEV model stats. Maybe it isn't using the petrol engine at all. Maybe it is only using the petrol engine as a generator to recharge the battery and therefore it's just using the electric motors. Apparently this model will also do 0 to 60 miles an hour, 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds. Actually, I think it's 4.7 seconds. It's slightly faster than the FEV model. Now, this model though has a cruising range, well, a distance of 475 kilometers, a little bit shorter because it's all-wheel drive using a little bit more power, has more power as well. Now, one of the things I found surprising, it's actually a seven-seater and it's nearly 4.9 meters long. So it is actually a good-sized vehicle, a little bit longer, a little bit bigger than the Tesla Model Y, but a direct competitor for the Tesla Model Y in China. Now, for context, those horsepower numbers equal about 500 kilowatt. That's a lot of power, right? That's a lot more than similar ice-powered competitors, right? That it's a lot cheaper than. If you wanted this vehicle to compare against something else, you, the only vehicle really that you could compare this against maybe are the Mercedes AMG, the CLA model, which is their sort of medium-sized SUV, it's actually a bit smaller than this. It's not a seven-seater to five-seater, but it comes with a twin turbocharged V8. It has actually quite a lot less power. I think it's about 420 kilowatt from memory. Similar thing, similar story with Audi and BMW's models of, you know, BMW obviously has the X5M, and that's closer in size to this X5M. It's about double the price, and it has a bit less power but it will do zero to 60 miles an hour in around about four seconds flat. So it's a little, little bit faster than this car, but twice the price. And of course, it's an old petrol car. I mean, good luck trying to resell one of those in five years when nobody wants them. So you can see, if you compare it to its direct com competition, it's a far superior vehicle. And it's the only one in this range of vehicles which actually comes with seven seats. Those cars I just spoke about before, none of them come in seven seat versions. Unless, of course, you want to go up to the higher again in price models such as, you know, Mercedes GLE or the GLS or the new BMW X7. I mean, in those cars, are just the prices, we're talking triple the price now. So they're not even closely comparable. Now, if you look at the interior of this vehicle and you compare the interior of this car to, say, super luxury vehicles, let's say you remove the badge on this car and you just said to a customer, I'm not going to tell you what car this is but tell me what kind of class do you think this car would be in? There is no doubt they would say this is a luxury car. Absolutely no question. Look at the interior. It's definitely ahead of, of many luxury cars on sale today. I mean, look at the actual infotainment screens, the minimalism of the car, the style, the, even the steering wheel looks extremely well ex executed. Everything on the inside and the outside of this car, to me, screams. Okay, I'll tell you what it screams. It screams Maserati. 10 years into the future. That's what it says to me. Maserati 10 years into the future when Maserati will be gone and no one will... People will remember them as a fond as a fond thing, but, you know, they're just ancient. They're old technology. In comparison to this, sorry, it's just, you know, I love the brand. I love the brand. You know, I work with someone who ha owns a Maserati. It's a beautiful looking car. But honestly, it costs twice the price of this and this is just far superior in every, every single way. So what's the price? Base model, the two-wheel drive costs 48,000 US dollars. The all-wheel drive model costs 51,000 US dollars. Now, if this car was on sale in Europe for those prices, in Australia for those prices, in the United States for those prices, well, yeah, they would sell out of this car for years to come. 
the demand would be insane. And th- the same story, you can see the same story would be in place for many, 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 many other cars, many other cars that are on sale now in China. If they were on sale for the same prices as they are in China, in other countries, in Europe, in Australia, in America, in Canada, in the UK, you know, just in many other countries worldwide, in New Zealand, in South Africa, in Japan, these cars would be so popular, they would just, the manufacturers wouldn't know what to do with themselves. Now, Dongfeng actually have another brand called Feng Xing. I think it's called Feng Xing. Sounds right to me anyway. And they sell an SUV called the Four Thing T5 Evo Goddess Edition for women. It was released on the 2nd of September, 2021. And it's, um, well, it's their attempt to appeal to female buyers. But my point in talking about this car is it's 15,000 US dollars for a medium-sized SUV. It comes with a petrol engine, not saying you should buy one, not saying it's going to succeed. My point is, to succeed in China, in the mid-priced budget to mid-priced type segment, you need to price your cars so cheaply. You need to work out a way to manufacture them at a price that is extremely competitive to get sales. And that is the environment we're living with in China. That is the situation in China right now. There is new cars being released in China constantly at a far greater rate than what anyone is aware of. This medium-sized SUV, 15,000 US dollars. Comes standard with a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. It's 4.6 meters in length. Comes with a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. And I mean, for this price, personally, I'd much prefer a BYD Yen or well, one of many other EVs. But my point is here, this Chinese market is so, so, so tough. There is so much competition. And once these automakers start selling these cars, if only 50% of these automakers sold their cars outside of China, it would be very scary for Western automakers, extremely scary. Now, back in 2018, Dongfeng made a concept car with a name that's unpronounceable. It uses the Greek letter for pi. Apparently, the Pi is popular in China these days. Yudo Auto is also using it as a name for their electric crossovers. Bet you you've never heard of Yudo Auto. No, well, there's so many brands you haven't heard of. There's 400 EV brands in China, literally. Now, this is a a really stunning concept car. Whether they ever bring this production, I don't know. As far as I can tell, they haven't brought a production yet. However, just look at the design here. If you were able to see a concept car like this at a show coming from BMW or Mercedes, what would you think? You'd think, wow, that's impressive. But basically an unknown, in the West, unknown Chinese car company made this in 2018, three years ago. Now let's just end with this, the Dongfeng Warrior M50, which was launched on the Chinese car market in July of this year. Even though this is unfortunately doesn't come in in an electric version yet, it is, in my view, the coolest pickup truck, ute, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever seen. This thing is literally the army version of the car. All that Dongfeng did was change the paint colors and make it available to the average Chinese customer. So the Warrior M50 is the first civilian variant of Dongfeng's long-running Warrior series. And it's the first Chinese special military utility vehicle to be converted from military to civilian use. But Car News China says you should take this with a few grains of salt because it's only difference between the military version and the real version you can buy now is the paint colors. Now, personally, this would be my dream car. You're probably gonna think there's something wrong with me here, maybe, but this would be my dream car. An electric version of this couldn't get any better than that. I'd have so much room for my kids' bikes in the back and all our gear to go on trips together. It would be unreal. Anyway, Dongfeng is an interesting company. And you can see here's just another EV in the Chinese auto market that is absolutely saturated with so many different EVs. So many companies just waiting, biding their time before they go to the West. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.